Rufit Dadashav, it is a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for uh, for joining and spending some time with me today. Hi, thank you for, for, for asking me for, and uh, I'm happy to be here with you. And uh, that's no problem. You're welcome. You know, I have to say right off the bat, because we haven't met, and this is actually the first time I've had an interview with a player I haven't met before. Um, you sound more German than you do coming from Azerbaijan. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, I, I, was, I'm, I was born in Azerbaijan, in Baku, in the main city, and um, my family and uh, me, so I, I was six years old when we moved to Germany. So I had my whole time in Germany. I, I, I do my school in Germany, I play soccer in Germany, so my whole life was in Germany. Okay, so really for you then, and this is something that will be new to the fans, um, although you're a national in Azerbaijan, you're, you've really just grown up in Germany. So uh, yeah. that's home for you, basically. Yeah, yeah. So, but I feel, I, feel, I feel my home is both, both of them. So I feel at home when I'm in Azerbaijan, when I'm with the national team, I feel at home too, so like in Germany. Because uh, my family, so only my family is in Germany, my, my grand, grandpa and uh, my, my uncles, they're all in Azerbaijan. So I think I, I, I feel at home when, I, when I'm there and when I'm in Germany too. That's, you know, I love it. I think it's great that you have such diversity in your life and, and maybe some challenges from that too, which we're going to get to a little bit later. Um, we're going to try something a little bit new today because uh, I was doing some research on you and I was really amazed. Some very, very cool stuff about you uh, that made me very excited. But one of the biggest things is that you've got a brother who plays for Wolfer uh, Wolverhampton, the Wanderers, in uh, the English Premier League. Um, yeah. And his name is Rene? Renat. Renat, okay. Rainet. Yeah. And did you two grow up playing soccer together then? Yeah, he always wanted to play with me. So when he was young and uh, yeah, I was older and he always wanted to play with us uh, old guys. So, <laughs> and I think it was for him a, a good thing. There he is. Yeah, yeah, there he is. Yeah. So he is now 21 and uh, he always played with uh, older guys. And I think for him, it was really good for, for his opportunity and uh, to stay uh, now there where he is. Now, there was quite an age difference between you two, so I don't really see you two as having a competitive relationship with each other, like, you know, some brothers who are a year or two apart, right? Um, what's your relationship like with him? Do you follow with, along with him and his career and everything pretty closely? Yeah, for sure. So it's my brother, so uh, I'm so proud of him, and he is proud of me, what we, what we do in our life. And, uh, yeah, I'm always on his side. I, I'm not... Uh, directly on his side uh, so uh, but uh, he always called me or we, we always ride with, with another and uh, so I'm always on his side if he has problems or something like that he always talked with me so we have a really close relationship how fortunate for you and and for him I mean uh, you don't see that too often you know where you get siblings who can who you know work with each other that well so that's yeah. uh, that's great so um, I know I read in Wikipedia because you always go there as one of the sources um, that your family, your whole family, has been very athletic, right? I guess your dad was yeah. a water polo player. Was that right? Yeah, he was a water polo player, a professional water polo player. He plays for the national team too of, of Azerbaijan, and uh, he was the captain of this team. Yeah, and my mom, she play handball, which is a brutal sport, by the way. <laughs> yeah, but. I, I, I I think water polo is harder than uh, than the handball. I well, think yeah. water polo is re really hard. So in the in the water, and uh, my dad told me. So I started with water polo too. Did you? I was going to ask yeah. if he tried to drag you into that <laughs> since he was a player. Yeah, I, I I started. I think I started with four years to swim, and uh, I play water polo. And when we come when we came to Germany, it was hard to find. A water polo team it was not so popular like in uh, Russia or Azerbaijan and uh, then I started with soccer <laughs> gotcha interesting now um, 
Something else that I thought was interesting is that um, as you grew up, you went through what I would call a development program in Germany. You played in a lot of the Jugend leagues in, in Germany and got a lot of experience there. And now everything's starting to click because I, I honestly thought that you grew up most of your life in Azerbaijan and then yeah. somehow got shipped to Germany. Um, yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah. So what was it like um, playing in the Yugen leagues? And how would you, if you've had any exposure to here in America, how would you think it compares? Yeah, so I played the whole time in Germany in the Yugen leagues. Yeah, so it was, I think for me, it was one of the greatest things uh, to play soccer in the, in the from from a, from a children so i i learned the the language really fast and that's the thing where um, that's a good thing for me so so i can't uh, so i so i uh, i could uh, speak with the other guys and uh, that was really really good for me and uh, yeah uh, what do you want to know exactly so uh, did you find that Jugend League was very, very competitive? Um, I played a little bit in those kind of leagues when I lived in Germany. Um, and then I've done a little bit of coaching, but not much because of my stupid job. Um, yeah. And, you know, soccer still developing here in the United States. And I just found the intensity level, especially for those young kids, was extremely high. Did you feel a lot of pressure as you were, you were playing? Yeah. So I think it was really hard in Germany. So the, the pressure is, I think, from from a from a when i think when you're 10 you have the pressure so in every team so the 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 coaches and the team they only want to win so and they 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 play soccer not i think it's not for fun so it's 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 like a professional sport for the for the for the kids they don't play only for fun i think so they learn a lot of tactics so and everything you know it's not only hey come on go out go outside and play play soccer no it's it's not that you play they say to you okay you, if the goalkeeper have the ball he play to the right side you have to go to the left side you have to go in front and it's it's <laughs> it's not only for fun I, uh, and it, i think it's the the now it's it's harder than than in my time in my time it was a little bit better i would say and now I think now the the young kids they they have so much pressure on, on, on themselves. So where did you grow up in Germany? What town did you grow up in? So we grew up in uh, it's Taunusstein, so Taunusstein, Wien. It's in the near of Frankfurt and Wiesbaden. Okay. So yeah, yeah you played for Mainz, I think. So that was kind yeah, of yeah. So I played for Mainz and. Uh, yeah, when I was, I played for Mainz, I think, till 15. And after this year, they told me uh, they don't want to uh, have, they don't want that I play uh, longer for this club because I was too, they said to me I was too little. So I, I was, yeah, yeah. I was not, I was not so big in this time. So I was, it Your was not like, was later, I, I take it. yeah, and but in this season, I made I think twenty one goals and uh, eighteen assists. And after that, uh, they say that to me. It was for me. Well, it was a hard time for me. I I don't want to play anymore soccer. So I came home and I cried and I I said to my dad, No, I don't want to play this shit anymore. So and uh, they said they told me I'm too I'm too small and everything like that. And um, yeah, it was a hard time for me. So. Um, when I when I look back, so I only I think I only played because of my dad because he said no, you're a good player and uh, let them talk and everything. And uh, after that, I I went to another club, and uh, I found I found uh, it was not the, the biggest club. So mine's is a really good club, mm -hmm. and uh, but after this situation, I I don't want to play. And then he said, come on, go and play with your friends. And there was a team in Wiesbaden. There was a team where all my friends played, and I, I go to this team. And in this one two years, I uh, I grew up. Yeah, and the, <laughs> I was so I was so big after that one two years, and after that I go to Kaiserslautern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then no, I Kaiserslautern very well. Yeah, and this is the and everything starts I think with with this team with Kaiserslautern. So 
I, I, I came to the national team uh, when I was in Kaiserslautern and I think the everything starts with this team and uh, I'm happy about it now. So who did you follow? What club was your dream club as you were growing up to play with? Oh, when I, when I was young, so I still, still, uh, I'm a fan of Bayern Munich, but uh, so... I... <laughs> you have yeah. no idea how much shit I get from people because I'm a Bayern Munich fan. It's... Oh yeah, me too, me too. They say we're only a fan because we, because we won every, every time the league and everything, but it's not true. It's not true. Well, I remember the 80s and the 90s. Do you remember? Well, the 90s, you know? The, yeah. Just terrible times. They were horrible. Yeah, I know. But and I, I am a fan. You know why I'm a fan? So when we came, came to Germany and the first trickle I get from my parents, it was a Bayern Munich trickle. And I, I even don't know this club or something like that. It, it was a Bayern Munich trickle. And since, since this time, I am a Bayern Munich fan. So it's a long time. So for me, I was playing, I'm young, I'm very poor, I'm, I'm pretty much doing everything illegally at this point, um, bopping between Gosthäuser and just working jobs if I can, didn't eat every day, and Bayern Munich is one of the teams where they gave us not only free tickets to come to the game, but they fed us too, and yeah. so they won me over, I mean... When yeah. they beat me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although I do, I do, do love Hertha Berlin too. I lived in Berlin for years, and I love uh, Hertha Berlin. Yeah. Uh, but that's funny because you're in Frankfurt, right? And so you had to get a lot of hate be, being yeah. a Bayern Munich fan around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not healthy. But yeah, it doesn't care me. So <laughs> I'm happy about it. So when did you start? What age did you start playing professionally? Yeah, I think it was when I was, um, I think I was 18 mm -hmm. when I moved to Kaiserslautern. So, yeah, with 18. So Kaiserslautern was your first professional team. Yeah. You moved through a couple of teams, and I have to point one out just because it's uh, it's just in my heart. Um, I just I couldn't believe it when I read it. You played for <laughs> BFC Dynamo, right? Um, yeah. And you had a stellar year. I, I looked at your stats. It was like 25 goals and 26 yeah. appearances. Yeah. Did you I, live I, in Berlin? Did you love it up there? Yeah. So I have to say I love this club. And uh, I, I really love this club. And uh, it was a really good year for me for me too. So I played a really good season. I think I, I made 25 goals in 25 or 26 games. Yeah. And uh, – so this club is an amazing. It, it's a it's a really, f I, I would say it's a family club. So yeah. I feel so great there. So the people in in the uh, from from the club and in the club, the people they are so nice to me and the fans too. So I have now contact with with some of the fans and uh, they they write me every day and uh, they look the games here and they are so happy for me that I play now in the U.S. and yeah. Oh, fam now where did you live in Berlin when you were in Berlin? What area? Uh, I lived in um, Hohenschönhausen. Yeah, so right by yeah. the old stadium. Well, well, yes, yeah, it's this is the reason why we live there. We get a we get apartments there from from the club, and this is the reason why I live there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'll, I'll tell you this very quickly. Uh, if you remember uh, back in the seventies, it was in East Berlin, right? Um, I'm living in West Berlin at the time. Um, my dad had some contacts and my mom did too. Long story short, I saw a game, okay, between, this is so cool, BFC Dynamo and Union Berlin. Union, oh, it's a crazy yeah. game. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Because you go to the stadium and there's the Russian guards with their machine guns and everything around yeah. the stadium. And, uh, and of course, uh, Union Berlin lucked out and won the game. But since that day, and I've never done it, but now I'm going to, I want to get a Dynamo uh, jersey because that would yeah. just be stellar. The black and white, yeah. The black, yeah. The, ah. <laughs> love it. Anyways, I just had to share that because I know you know, um, what's it called? The the Weltjugend Stadium? Was that what it was called before it got uh, destroyed? Weltjugend uh, or Schmitten, whatever it was. Um, yeah. That stadium, you know, got torn down, I think, for the Olympic stadiums. But uh, good memories and a great team and great people uh, in yeah. Berlin. 
Okay, so yeah. let's move on from there. Uh, two stellar years for you in Munster. Um, yeah. You know, and then that's just pre Phoenix Rising. Um, I know you've been married. I don't know how many years have you been married now? Uh, we married last year in December, in December. Okay. So she's been probably a travel companion with you for a couple of years as you bop from city to city. Yeah. How did you like living in Munster and how did you like the club? Uh, we love it in Munster. So the city is really nice. So the people, it's a really young, young city. There are a lot of students. And uh, so we loved it in the city. And uh, the club was, uh, in the first year, it was, we had a really good team. In the first year, we had a really good team and a really good uh, coach. And uh, it was really nice. And uh, we played a good season. I think uh, we, we, we were, at, after the first half, we were at the second or third place, I think. And um, then and the, after, the, after the break, it was not so good for us. I think we, we moved to the seventh or eighth place after the season. But still, it was a really good team. So... Um, yeah, and this uh, second second year it was really hard. So we lost a lot of good players because their contracts ending and they they go to another teams, and the club can't hold these guys because they they get offered uh, from better teams and more money. And I understand it uh, if the, that they leave. And the club uh, it was hard for the club. They only had, they hold they take only young guys from the third league and uh, only they only want to play with young guys and uh, it's really hard to play in Germany in the third league with uh, young guys and we had a young coach and yeah it, it was a really hard half season so I played on only the half season there and mm -hmm. then I moved to Phoenix because I, um, I, it, I think it was, it was a chance for me to move uh, to another country and my dream was always to, to play another country and uh, after I get uh, the contact with Phoenix, with the coach and uh, with Bobby, and uh, I said to my agent, okay, I want to go. So how did that work out? Did, um, did Rick Schantz reach out to your agent and it was just kind of a typical transaction engagement or how did it, how did it work out? I, I think, uh, yeah, my agent, uh, Axel, Axel Dierolf, he, he has uh, um, many players here in the, uh, in the US he 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 is uh, typically for that he brings the uh, players from Germany to the US and from the US to Germany so he he know he know Phoenix he, he know the club and he know Bobby and he know Rick and uh, yeah they talk with, with each other and i think after that uh, coach uh, Rick Schanz was uh, looking some videos of me and yeah, I think uh, it was nice. <laughs> um, yeah, and after that, he called me and uh, we spoke. To, I think we spoke. To, I think for for thirty minutes, forty minutes, uh, the first time, and it was really it was a ni nice talk. And uh, after that talk, I, I uh, directly after the talk, I told to my wife, "Okay, I want to go to to this club." <laughs> So did she have any idea that you were looking at going to some place that's as hot as the third plane of hell? Um. <laughs> uh, so we heard it, it's hot, but I don't, I don't knew that it's so hot. <laughs> yeah. It's, how has that been for you? Have you been able to adjust pretty well and how difficult has that adjustment been? Um, so the good reason is, so I like the sun. Mm -hmm. So it, it it was hard for me the first the first uh, I think one month so but now I think I I'm used to it now so it's okay for for me it's okay now so I don't want to go now to the sun uh, outside you know so I don't want to go in this sun uh, to for a walk or something like that I'm at home uh, at this time mm -hmm. but uh, at the training uh, we we train early in the morning it's okay and uh, the games are I late here in, uh, in Arizona so we play every time at seven so it's okay so <laughs> yeah as long as you don't have that direct sun coming down on you that's really yeah. after that right oh um, yeah so um when you first arrived at the stadium I know you arrived when COVID was kicking in because I saw you guys were having some practices with the people who had shown up and you were one of the guys on the pitch 
Well, what was it like integrating with the team? Did you hit it off with anybody right off the bat? How did that work out? Um, I, I have to say it was uh, it was so nice. The team is so nice. So it, it was so easy for me to get in this team. So it was my first day. And uh, so my English is still not so good. But <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they, they, they made it really easy for me. So everybody come to me. They, they talk with me. They said, come on, we're going something to eat. And it was easy to come in the team. It was so easy. And I'm so happy for that. So I do have a couple of, I've actually asked one or two already, but I, I ask fans to ask questions to, to ask you. Um, and one of the things that's related to this um, is from Michael Vanderplas. He says, um, what was the most surprising thing you learned about American culture since you moved here? Uh, <laughs> so the most, I think it, the most surprising thing for me is that I have to say it's not a good thing now because I, I think we had to, how could I say it? So with the situation, with COVID-19, I think the people here, I think a lot of people don't, uh, don't take it so much serious as we have to, I think. Mm -hmm. if, I think there was a time, I think one month ago, uh, there was a time where people are going to parties and they're going to, be, uh, to beach clubs or to... And they go everywhere and they don't care, you know, and I think that's that's not a good thing. So I have I think we have to everyone, every one of us have to wear a mask right now at, at this time and to be careful of ourselves and to be careful of, of for for others, you know. So I, I'm a young guy. I, I think when I get the COVID nine nineteen, I think it will be okay. But if I get it, maybe I will get it to to someone who's older. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe for him it could be the death. And I think this is the reason so that we have to be careful, every one of us. Well, and we're seeing long-term effects on breathing, right, which for you as a football player is key um, yeah. and could affect your whole career. And so you've got to be, you've got to be careful with yeah. all that. But um, a good thing, but I have a good thing too. So I think the people here are so open, so... I don't know that the people are so open here. They are so friendly, everyone. So if I go to the grocery store, the people are so open, so helpful. So I didn't know that. In Germany, it's not the same. No. So, yeah. So, it's so funny. I, I think you know it, you know it uh, better. Yeah, well, I mean, even today, my, I mean, my German's rusty. You know, it's been 30 years, but I can still speak pretty good German. And when I go over there for vacation, even now they get annoyed when I try to talk German to them. I'm like... Give me a break. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is a really good thing. So I love the, the Americans. So it's not, it's, it's not only that I have, that I see a negative things. So it's, it's really nice here. So I love it here. So let me ask you this. If you, uh, you know, and I was, my mentality was, okay, mainly from um, Azerbaijan, right? Not Germany, but Germany applies too. If you wanted to share a meal with an American, and just to show them your culture and your food and all that kind of thing, what kind of a meal would you serve up? Um, so I think if, if, if I had to cook or if we go to a restaurant. Anybody could eat. cook, yeah, whatever you think would be the best. Okay, so I think if, if, if my wife had to cook, she, would, uh, she, made, she made a really good lasagna, so it's not, it's not special for Germany or Azerbaijan. <laughs> It's not special for that. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I think I, I don't uh, eat really much typical German food. So I don't know. So I think I don't know what is really typical. So, okay, maybe some potatoes with schnitzel, you know, mm -hmm. schnitzel. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe this is some uh, typical German food, but my wife is cooking everything. So I don't know <laughs> what you know. I would I, I'm very disappointed in your answer, I have to say, Rufik, because I was really expecting like rouladen, Jaeger schnitzel, you know, potato salad, you know, the, and, and huge amounts of beer, you know. Yeah. Lasagna, okay, lasagna's, lasagna's good, but <laughs> the problem with all that German food is you get all those carbs and then your legs get big, yeah? So, yeah. <laughs> but I think, I think the food in America is the same. Yeah, that's true. And, and we eat enormous amounts of it. Um, 
I have another question for you. Um, and this was a huge topic. The day we found out that you were signed, right? All of our core fan base were out there looking you up, doing our homework and finding out he you know, plays in German third league and all that. Um, Jonathan, I call him Jonathan the Brit, golly boss on uh, Twitter. He asks, um, how do you feel about the playing level of the USL Championship League? And I'm going to throw in there, how do you, would you compare it to uh, the, the league that you played in Germany in, in, in third league? Okay, so I have to say, so now I, have, I think I only have three games now, so um, yeah, sure. it's, hard, it's hard to say it right now, but I can say that our team, so our team, Phoenix Rising, is, uh, I think we would be a really, really good team in the third league. So, so this, is, this is the thing, what I, what, what I can say, what I see to my clubs in Germany and here. And the other teams, I, I, I think it's hard to me to say it right now because we only have three games. And sure. uh, yeah, so, but yeah, I think it will be like the, maybe some, so, so I think we played now against Orange County and I think they, they have a good team too. It was, it was a hard game for us. So I think Orange County is a two at the same level, like uh, the clubs in the third league. And um, I think, but but I think uh, a lot of clubs will have to level in the four for the fourth league in Germany. Um, I think that's fair, and I'm glad to hear you say that because I felt like Phoenix Rising would be competitive in German third league also. Oh yeah, yeah, um, for sure. Um, kind of interesting there. Um, Jonathan also asks, um, are you used to the level of work rate that is being asked you to commit to in Rick Schantz's system? Oh yeah, yeah. So, I, so I get used to it. So I think I get used to it. So the coach wants to play a really high press, and he all, he always wants that we press, press, press. And uh, so in Germany, it was not the whole time this uh, that we have to press. Sometimes we we play really deep, and uh, but for me, I I like it better to press the whole time. So if we if we win the ball, we are so near to the goal, and we have so good players in the front uh, in our team and uh, there were that we can score a, a lot of goals. Um, what in your eyes is your best attribute in Rick Schantz's formations? What do you think, what do you think you bring to the pitch? Um, do you say, uh, do you say uh, like me now personally or? Yeah, your skills, what skills okay. do you think you are, your so best? I I, I'm a I'm a team player, so I, I fight for 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 every ball, and uh, I love to score goals. I think uh, the best thing uh, what I can do is uh, to score goals. Uh, I love I love to to play in the box, you know. Uh, but it's not only that I love to score goals. I love to give assists too, and uh, I love uh, to play with the team soccer. So it's not only that I stay in front and waiting for the balls. No, that's not only that. So I love to play with the team. You know, it's interesting. Some of the commentators, there's, there's a guy on Twitter who's doing some analysis stuff, and I can't think of his name right now because he's new. Uh, but he had some really good comments about you and your movement on the field, um, how you would transition very quickly and how you're opening up space by the way you're positioning yourself on the field. I always seen that left and right as we were watching OC. Um, and you know what? I'm going to skip a couple things here, and we'll come back to them maybe – Let's talk about the OC game for a minute. Um, yeah. Clearly, the club was frustrated coming out of it. We entitled stupid fans. I mean, we're just so entitled. We, you know, <laughs> we were upset because we didn't feel like the club was playing up to their, their potential. And I think the players did too. Um, what do you think was frustrating our team the most as you went on playing that game? So, yeah, I think it was not our best game. So, and... I think everybody in the team we knew it, and uh, we we are not happy about the about our game, and um, so after the game we directly directly after the game we said okay next week we will win next week we we, we will we will play better and we know we know what we have to do better, mm -hmm. so I don't want to say it now because maybe some of the Orange County guys look at it. No, 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 no. we don't want details, so, not at all. Yeah, so. <laughs> Um, but we know what what you have to do better, and yeah, it, it was not a good game. I don't know why. So it was our our first game um, away. So 
I don't. I really don't know why why we why we had uh, such a hard game. So I, I really don't 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 know. So for me, so uh, it's it's hard to say. So that yeah, it was a bad pitch or it was a bad field, and I don't like to say it. So so I know that it was not a good game, and everybody knows that. And I. I think we will we will uh, we will do it better on uh, Saturday, and uh, so that's what I can say. I can tell you right now, this game coming up on Saturday is one of the most anticipated games by fans that we've had in a long time. This is a huge, huge game in the eyes of the fans, and we yeah. can't wait to see how it plays out. And of course, we're a thousand percent behind you guys. And it drives us nuts that we can't be there because we always go to OC games. Um, yeah. But we we uh, we hope that you guys just take all your frustrations out on, on <laughs> County and just I mean, it would be great to see you guys just make a, a huge statement out there on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. So we will do it. We we won't do it, and I think we will do it. So I think we are really confident. Our team. We know that we can do it better. We know what we can do, and we know that we are a good team. So. We we will do it better. So I think it was it was the first game away. So we drive to the bus six seven hours, and you know everything is is coming together. The, but uh, I I don't want to say that it's only because we drive with the bus or the 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 field was bad. No no no. We 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 don't we don't uh, had the the one hundred percent in our body. So I don't know why, but uh, we trained this week pretty good. So. And we know we know what we have to do that we would, that we we that we will win. Super! Oh, I'm can't wait. I mean, <clears throat> I have the whole night planned out already. It's going to be phenomenal. Um, let me ask you a couple of other things. I had another fan question that I wanted to uh, throw at you. Um, this is from uh, Gavrino. Having experience on the international level, who's the best player you've ever shared the pitch with? Um so I think the best player um, I think I have to say it's it's solo. Wow. Okay. I think I have to say it's solo because I think I never had a player who who plays so good for the team. He he's he's our captain and he's not the guy who said Oh yeah, I have to score. I am the captain. I am the best one. He's such a team player. It's crazy. And his assist, I have to say, I think I never get one player who will give me so so good assist. So I think I have to to say so though. Yeah. I you know what? It's surprising, but at the same time, it's not because you describe solo perfectly. Um, one of the things that I realized when I started seeing the very limited clips out there of you was that you were just going to get fed balls left and right from solo, from Flemings, from Vaccaro, from Lambert. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, when we get out there and everything clicks, it's going to be devastating for other teams. Um, huge compliment for solo. Well, well played. Um, <laughs> um, Anthony Evans asks, can you recommend a Baku bar for Rising's Welsh fans to visit at the Euros next June? Oh, I think uh, I don't go to bars there, so I think I only was there when I was with the national team. So didn't get I don't have, no I, 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 I didn't have the time to go out, and uh, we are not allowed to go out. We are always in our hotels, so and in, in the training. So I had to ask my my family in Azerbaijan, and and then I can say him. Uh, I think I I, I, can, I I think I could say two or three good bars. So I think Baku, but Baku is a really nice city. So it's really really beautiful. It's uh, if you if you come to Baku, you will you will think, oh, I'm at Dubai. I'm at Dubai. So this this is the, this is the thing. What people, uh, my friends, when they when they visit me, they visit me for the games, and they ask me, oh my gosh, I I didn't know that Baku is so nice. <laughs> It's on my short list to visit. I've never been that far east, and I want yeah. to go to the Caspian Sea. So, yeah, uh, Baku looks fabulous. Uh, so, that's yeah, definitely going to happen. Um, let me uh, before I get to one or two other things, and I'm looking at our time because Zoom's going to cut us off unceremoniously. Um, 
you've answered a lot of stuff, which is great in your in your answers already. Okay, so um, I guess you don't have a Twitter account. At least none of us can find you. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have Twitter. And I don't have the Facebook account. I only have the Instagram account. So okay, well, we'll have to look. I haven't looked at it. I don't do Insta much. I should. I'm just too old. <laughs> I think it's the same like Twitter. <laughs> it, it is, but people say I'm too old for Twitter too. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't think that 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 you are too old. No, you. So your exposure to the fans really has been the LA Galaxy two game, right? Um, how did you, what was your feeling about the fans and the presence of the fan in the field? How did you like the experience in the stadium that night? Um, without fans. Yeah. I don't like it. Oh, no, no. With, with the fans that night in ah. LA Galaxy 2. Um, uh, uh, no, first... LA Galaxy 2, no. The first game was uh, with uh, how was it? Portland Timbers? Or... Oh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. That's it. Portland Timbers. You got your hat trick, which was... I was... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This was the first game. Yeah, it was, it, it was amazing. So I didn't know that uh, that there are so 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 many fans and that they sing the whole time and uh, it, it was fantastic i liked that and it, it it was 10 times better than without fans <laughs> well if you ever get bored and you just want to see a bunch of really weird people just go look up phoenix rising fans because we are passionate and we're obnoxious and we expect yeah. only the best um other than that we're yeah. a good group of people oh yeah <laughs> So what did it feel like when when you left the game against Portland Timbers? You know, you're leaving the pitch after the game, and you've got a hat trick. Yeah, so I was so happy. So I, uh, it was it it was amazing. So it was so crazy for me. So in the first game to make a hat trick. So I think it, that's not so easy uh, to make a hat trick in the first game for the new club. And I think it. it 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 was amazing. So I love to, to look back at it. It was an amazing night. And I think it's going to foretell a lot of what we're going to see from you uh, in the yeah. season. I, I truly believe that you were kind of the final piece that had to be put into place to really make this team what it's going to be. Um, and uh, we've got big things to, uh, to come. Yeah. I think uh, I think this year we we want a lot of the whole team wants uh, a lot of and the fans I think we have to play with so much hurt for, not only for us so for the whole fans and the family so I told we are all one family so this is what I learned here so rising together so we are all one family and I love to say it and I'm so happy to be here. Well, I appreciate the time you've taken to spend with me and we're working. I have. I actually have another page and a half of questions for you. So. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe another time. Um, no problem. I, you know, I wish you all the best in the season. Um, just thrilled that you're with the squad. Um, I hope all is going well with your your wife. And uh, do you have any kids? I'm not sure. And uh, no, we have a, a dog. We have a dog. a dog. Oh, is that your wife? Oh, now make your wife say hi. Hi. I can't believe that we said lasagna is his favorite. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, there's so many other things. <laughs> oh, so that's a behind school. Laura, hi. Uh, Pigates, I'm Kevin. Uh, I'll tell you, the hund, that's our dog. dog. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at him. He's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, he, he's beautiful. Everyone tells us he's so beautiful. Yeah. Americans love Frenchies. Yeah, it's a French bulldog. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They do. Well, listen, we're going to wrap this up for now. Um, again, I can't thank you enough. Um, I would love to contact you offline a little bit because I've got a, a little favor or two. I think you might have seen that I did something with Phoenix Children's Hospital. Um, yeah. A couple of requests. Yeah, um, for sure. I'm, i got to wrap this up. We have a fan who's a smart aleck. I asked for questions, and here's his question. How does yeah. Kevin compare to others who have interviewed you? Just be nice. Oh, oh. Hey. 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 hey! 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 So, so, uh... Aus der Fleisch. Das ist das Wort. So, uh, I think, uh, 
it was uh, like I, I speak with my with my friends. So you know, it, it's not like uh, I speak with an with a guy from a newspaper or something like that. It, it was a uh, open and uh, an easy easy talk. So I. Well, I'm glad to hear that. It's what I try to do. I just want it to be a conversation. Yeah, this is a this is a conversation. It's not like a, a normal interview, you know, when they call you and they ask you and you say only that what they want to hear. So uh, it's it's like a, a, a talk with my friend, you know. And this is this is what I love. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. And there you go, Pat. You got your answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, hot me, ganz gefreut, vielen Dank. Um, I hope that when the season's over, we can take a minute and have a beer together. Would love to do it. Uh, Bitburger, yeah, for sure. And, for sure. <laughs> and uh, we will see you on Saturday. Yeah, thank you. Thank you a lot. Stay safe. Stay safe, yeah. Stay yes, safe. you too. All right. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. See ya. Cheers. Oh.